morning, mga kapatid. I want to speak to you today about uh, the book of Titus. We're going to study the book of Titus today. And if you have your Bible, would you open your Bible in the book of Titus? Yeah. We're about to wrap up the book of Titus. It's a very short book written, written by Paul to a pastor. He had left to care for the churches on the island of Crete. Titus like Timothy. Uh, I was a young associate of Paul. Paul's book seemed to have been saved as a result of Paul's preaching. Paul assisted Paul in his troubles and later, and later uh, in his ministry, Paul would come to rely heavily on this man to establish the churches that he planted. So Timothy and Titus were two young preachers whom Paul had the privilege of leading to the Lord. Paul calls both of them his sons, his genuine sons, that is, he led both of them to a saving knowledge of Christ. Of course, he is not uh, na hindi niya tunay na anak talaga, pero tinuturin po niyang anak. So, pag-aralan po natin ngayon ito. Uh, I do believe in this study, marami po tayong matutunan, magpupulot na aral, at isa-isa po natin. But before that, uh, can we pray? Every head bow and eye Father God, we thank you. We thank you once again that you are here. You are in the midst of God. Speak to your people today. Lord, use your servant and instrument only. Give me a conviction and clear conviction that I may preach your word with power and boldness, without compromise, to bring glory to your name, as you said in your word that not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So pag-aaral po ito, mga kapatid, marami po tayong matutunan, naliwala ko, lalong-lalo na, uh, yung mga kapanahunan ito ay marami pong mga confusion, marami pong mga uh, false teachers. There are many false teachers at uh, even yung mga kung at sino ba yung dapat na naglilingkod ano? sa kingdom ng Panginoon. What are the characteristics? Yung mga katangian ng isang mananaral, ng isang naglilingkod po sa Panginoon. Here, in Titus uh, chapter 1, uh, verse 16, here he profess to do God, but in works they deny him being available, disobedient, and disqualified for every good work. Kung papasin po natin po rito, bago natin, before we're going to, to the uh, verse 1, said they profess to know God, but in works they deny him being abominable, disobedient, and disqualified for every good work. What is the word disqualified for every good work? So, ganito po, ano, ang pagkakasabi sa Tagalog. I gotta read it also sa Tagalog. Sabi dito, here, in verse 16, ang sabi nila ay, kilala nila ang Diyos. Kilala nila ang Diyos, ngunit hindi naman ito nakikita sa kanilang mga gawa. Hindi naman ito nakikita sa kanilang mga gawa. Sila ay kasuklam-suklam, suwail, at hindi makagawa ng anumang mabuti. They are hateful and disobedient, not fit to do anything good. Other verses just they claim to know God. They claim that they knew God, but their action, they deny it. So dito, ano, maraming mga Kumbius, maraming mga nalikaw, maraming mga nalinlang. So, dito mga kapatid, uh, Paul wrote leaders to both of these brethren. Kasi pagka pinag-aralan po natin ang Titus, hindi naman natin pwede hindi pag-aralan yung Timothy. So after to study ng book of Titus, we're going to study the book of Timothy. And Paul wrote leaders to both of these brethren. We have two epistles to Timothy and one epistle to Titus. These letters are called pastoral epistles because in them, Paul gives instruction to these young preachers, to these young preachers concerning the local church. 
These letters are also proved very profitable for us to us today. We have so much other instruction related to the local church. I suppose we could fill a whole library with the books that have been written on how to write the local church. In the scripture, we have only these three epistles and they are very brief. Yet they do give us the essential goodness of running for the church. What they do impress upon us is that if there is a lack or a need in a church, it isn't a problem with the organization or with the system that is being used. Rather, if there is a need in a church, it is a spiritual need. It's a spiritual need. Now, who wrote the book of Titus? Paul identified himself as the author of the letter to Titus, calling himself a man servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ. As a conservative of God and a positive of Jesus. So, malinaw na ang nagsulat po nito ay si Paul. Ano? Sulat po niya ito kay Titus. Binibigyan, binibigyan kasi siya na rito ng instruction kung paano mamuno ang isang uh, leaders. Kung paano, kung paano niya pamahalaan, pamunuan ang kanyang nasukupan na, na, na church na ipinagkaiwala sa kanya. Um, where are we? Paul wrote his letter to Titus from Nicopolis in Edisicity after the apostles released from his first Roman imprisonment. Upon leaving, Timothy and Ephesus to minister there. Paul accompanied Titus to the island of Crete, where he intended Titus to lead and organize the island churches in their early years of existence. So it while the gospel had no doubt spread the Crete soon after Peter's sermon at the Pentecost, Paul and Titus likely did a good deal of evangelism on the island in the weeks before Paul commissioned Titus to a leadership position there. So dito, maliwanag, mga kapatid, na sila po ay nangaral ng evangelism po sila doon kasama si Paul at si uh, Titus. Para pinangalan po nila ang Ibanghelyo, ang Gospel, ang mabuting balita. At dito mga kapatid, uh, makikita po natin na marami pong mga naniwala. Ito po yung good news, marami pong mga naniwala sa kanila. Sa kanila pong minsahe, many people believe on their message about the Gospels, about the Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. But, ganun pa man, uh, hindi po kasi mag, iiwan po kasi ito ni, ni Paul si Titus na mag-isa at alam po natin na siya ay uh, hindi pa ganun hindi pa siya ganun katandaan kaya marami pa siya pong, marami pa siyang dapat na matutunan no? at dito mga kapatid maliwanag na uh, dito po sila Dito po sila, kung titignan po namin yung lockdown po sila ng araw, marami po silang mga uh, inahatid po nila ang Ibanghelyo, ang mabuting balita sa mga sa mga tao. Marami pong mga nakarinig ng Ibanghelyo. Now, what the, what, what, what's the book of Titus about in the Bible? Paul wrote the book of Titus for his companion who was tasked with visiting Crete, a place in famous for sin and corruption. Titus was to restore order to house churches in Crete and replace corrupt teachers with godly leaders. Kaya po niya sinulatan kasi ang kanya pong tungkulin na kagampanan ay hindi po madali. Think about it, ano? Titus was to restore order to house churches and replace corrupt teachers with godly leaders. At dito makikita po natin sa lugar na yan ay talamak ang korupsyon. Talamak po ang maraming kasalanan. At ito po yung kanya pong assignment na gagawin. Kaya po, order po yung mga uh, pangaral ang katuluan ni Paul kay Titus. At maniniwala ko even today, mahalaga po sa atin ito. Amen mga kapatid? Nasusundan niyo po ba ako? Amen. Now, Paul, what was Paul's purpose for writing Titus? 
Paul wrote Titus to strengthen him in his assignment to lead and care for the branch of the church in Crete in spite of opposition. Kasi kapag ikaw ay gumagawa ng pabuti, ay may, hindi may iwasan na mayroon pong laging may posisyon. Kaya po niya, <coughs> kaya po siya binibigyan ng lakas ng loob na magpatuloy doon sa gawain na kanila pong sinimulat. Kaya po yun ang kanya pong uh, uh, advice, encouragement ni Paul sa kanya pong disciple na si Titus. Amen. Amen po ba? Amen. 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 Now, the letter urges Titus to appoint work elders to position of responsibility. Okay? To preach sound doctrine and to exemplify his own life the values that are expected of all Christians. Kita niyo po mga kapalit, mag- yung, yung gagawin po niya, no? mag-a-appoint po siya ng mga elders, ng mga mumuno in every city. Yun po ang kanyang gagawin. At tingnan mo din na hindi pa ito katandaan. Yan nga siya, yan tayo. At yun ang kanyang pong tungkulin na gagampanan. Gusto siya ng Prismanin to preach sound doctrine. To preach sound doctrine. Bakit? Kasi noong panahon ito, mga kapatid, maraming mga confused noon. There are many people who are confused sa, sa gospel, sa evangelyo. Hanggang ngayon, maraming pa rin confused. Kaya ito yung kanyang tungkulin na gagampanan. To preach sound doctrine, ibig sabihin, yung tamang aral. Ano, kaya nga po tayo nag-aaral ngayon ng book books para mas marami po tayong matutunan, mga kapatid. Hindi tayo malin lang mailigaw ng napakaraming mga mga naral. Marinig po natin yan. Na in order for you to be saved, you have to uh, to be a member of that specific uh, church, denomination, or or uh, ano bang mga uh, ano, religion nila? Or any other sect? Yung mga sekta na yan. At maparinig po natin niya. There are certain rituals and rules and regulations that you should uh, fully obey in order for you to be saved. Ano? Yan po ang maririnig po natin. Uh, to preach some doctrine and to exemplify his own life. The virtues that are expected for all Christians. Kapag ka, ikaw ay nagtuturo ka, ipinapangaral mo, Mahalaga na nakikita rin ito sa iyong buhay. Kasi kahit ikaw ay nangaral ka, maganda yung mga sinasabi mo. Kung hindi naman ito nakikita sa iyong buhay, ay walang kabuluhan. Amen po ba? Amen. Amen. Di po ba mga kapalit? Amen. Now let's think about the qualifications of the elders. Now, in verse 1, verse 1 by time, we're going to look only here verse uh, nine verses only but i do believe in these nine verses marami po tayong mapagkaaralan makikita mo lang Paul a servant of God and apostle of Jesus Christ according to the faith of God's elect and the knowledge of the truth which is after godliness other version says this letter is from Paul a slave of God an apostle of Jesus Christ, I have been sent to proclaim faith. Look, listen, I have been sent to proclaim faith. To proclaim faith to those God has chosen and to teach them to know the truth. To teach them to know the truth that shows them how to live godly lives. You? How to live what? Godly lives. Meaning, how do we make that meaning? Yung buhay na nakalulugod sa Panginoon. Ano po ba yung buhay na nakalulugod sa Panginoon? Many people uh, preach and teach about uh, the beauty of the gospel. And that is good. But very seldom we hear about how to live godly lives. Very seldom. Why? Because when we preach, how to live a godly lives, uh, maraming mga hindi napupunta ng church para makinig ng salita ng Diyos. Why? Kasi hindi pa ready, hindi pa ako handa. Yan ang lagi po natin narinig. Hindi pa ako handa. 
Paul considered himself a servant of God, an apostle of Jesus Christ. Consider himself an apostle of Christ. Paul considered himself a servant of God, an apostle of Jesus Christ. The Greek term Paul used is dolos, which means a slave or a man servant. As a willing servant, Paul was bound to follow God's command. Paul also claims to be an apostle from a Greek word meaning sent to one. Ibig sabihin, uh, isinugo, sent to one. And a missionary of the good news of Jesus is the Messiah. When you speak about Jesus is the Messiah, meaning uh, tagapagligtas, the anointed one, savior. Yan po ang ibig sabihin yun, the anointed one, tagapagligtas. And here, so doon makikita natin ano, na si Paul ay itinuturing po niya ngayong sarili po niya na servant. Kita niyo po yung uh, humility, yung kababahan po ng loob, despite na marami pong mga accomplishment. Marami ngayon na kapag ka, uh, they have a bigger church, a bigger uh, ministry, ano, uh, ano na, Seems na napaka yung VIP na makikita po natin. Pero here, makikita po natin si Paul yung pananatili po ng kanya pong kababaan ng loob. Mahalaga po yan sa paglilingkod sa Panginoon yung kababaan po ng loob, yung humility. Kasi kung mayroon kang pride, hindi mo tanggalin yung pride sa puso mo. Hindi ka pwedeng maglingkod sa Panginoon. And we know that it costs Lucifer fall from heaven because of pride. Think about that, the brothers and sister. In verse 2, in James Version it says, In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. So this verse continues Paul's introduction, including two important phrases. First, in hope of eternal life refers to Paul's future hope of eternity with Christ. Why go to church and pray? Why believe in God? Bakit ka pa naniniwala sa Diyos? Bakit ka na palataya sa Panginoon? Because of what? Because of our hope of eternal life. And that hope is not based on hope uh, na katulad sa tao lamang. But that hope is based on His love, in all His love, that He will not disappoint us because the one who promised is proven, faithful and true. Hindi po siya tulad ng tao na kapag ka nangako ay hindi po tinutupad. Pangako lang, magaling lang sa pangako. And here, maliwanag mga kapalit, sa verse na ito, first in hope of eternal life, the person calls future hope for eternity with Christ para makasama ang Panginoon sa buhay na walang hanggan. Ano ba yung buhay na inasahan mo? Yung buhay lang ba sa mundong ito? Kawa ba naman tayo? Kung yun lang ang inaasahan mo. Kasi kung yung inaasahan mo yung buhay na ito lamang, even you give all your best, ano? gawin mong lahat ng mga kaya mo, para ma-accomplish mo yung mga dreams mo sa buhay. And after that, how many years? Can you enjoy it after 8 years or 9 years? Sabi ka sa ilong ano, baka agkabukan. Meaning, baka wala ka lang ding lakas. Di mo na rin makilala yung mga kalabi mo pag matanda ka na. Pero po tayong inaasahan. Inaasahan. Hindi lamang sa buhay na ito, maging sa buhay na darating. Amen? Amen? Amen. Pero ba tayo inaasahan na buhay na darating o yung buhay lamang dito? Dapat meron po tayong inaasahan. See here, which God who never lies. Numbers 23, 19, the Bible says, God is not a man that he should lie. One of my favorite verse means you can claim his promises. 
There are more than 10,000 so promises. At ang lahat ng mga promises niya rito, lahat ay kanya pong tuto pa rin. Huh? Which God who never lies confirms about the Mishon's promise about God's truthful nature. In Numbers 23, 19, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 18, God is referred to using the Greek word apjudinous, meaning true or without falsehood. Notice the word without falsehood. This is not in contrast with previous cultural practices which often so lying as an acceptable behavior. In part, this was because the words Zeus, Zeus, a God who frequently used deception in order to have sexual relations with mortal women. Think about that. Kaya na nakikita nito sa mga pelikula eh. Kinukuha nila yan eh. Pero ito yung mga paniniwala ng mga tao ito na pupuntahan ni Taitos. Na pangangaralan niya. Ito yung mga tradisyon, mga kultura, kaugalian, mga pananampalataya na kinagistan ng kanilang mga ninuno. At ito ngayon, yung kanyang mga babahagian ng salita ng Diyos. Think about this. Oh, ganda ng mensahe mo. Ganun kaya lahat? Hindi po, mga kapatid. Pwede sabihin, takal na namin dito, dito na kami mamamatay. Ano ba yung ibang helyo na yan? Ano ba yung good news na yan? Ano ba yung mabuting balita na yan? Ito po yung may niyong pangalanan ng salita ng Diyos. At yung iba sa kanya, mas maraming mas matatanda sa kanya. Baka ka ba? Diba? Papunta ka pa lang. Kabalik na kami. Marami ka lang nakainang bigas. Narinigin natin yan eh. Diba? Verse 3. So, kita natin mga ako, diba? Parang yung verse 3 lang po tayo. So, yung verse 1, verse 2. Dito makikita natin yung mga kinagisnan, kaugalian ng mga taong kasama niya nakasama niya, babahagian niya ng salita ng Diyos, ng Ibanghelyo. When you speak about the Gospel, the Gospel means it's about the Lord Jesus Christ, the person and the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yun po ang kanya pong minsahe. Verse 3, But had in due times manifested His word through preaching, which is Committed unto me. Somebody bought. I committed unto me according to the commandment of God, our Savior. New Believing Translation says, and now at just the right time, at just the right time, He has revealed this message, which we announce to everyone. It is by the command of God, our Savior, that I have been entrusted with this word for him. So Paul says his current time as the proper, means appropriate time during which God had revealed new information. This, uh, this is a reference to the good news or gospel of Jesus, the Messiah who rose from the dead. Paul was a preacher as well as an apostle and he proclaimed the good news as part of his work as an apostle. God had entrusted this message to Paul, beginning with Paul's experience with Jesus on the road of Damascus. We know the story on the road of Damascus. We encounter Jesus. He is a persecutor. Siya yung unang terrorist, si Paul. But we know what happened on the road of Damascus. Siya ay uh, na-encounter niya ang Panginoon at nabago ang kanya pong buhay. We know yung kanila pong message. The message of the Apostles' Doctrine. Wala po po silang kompletong Bible katulad noon. But their preaching with signs, wonders, and miracles happened. When you speak about the Apostles' Doctrine, it was consistent in three parts. Number one, that Jesus was the Christ. Number two, that He rose from the dead. Number three, that salvation, uh, salvation is by faith in His name. Yun ang kanilang mensahe. Paulit-ulit yung mensahe po nila doon. Pero with signs, wonders, and miracles ang nangyayari. Nakikita po natin, may kapangyarihan. Yung kanila po yung mensahe. So, alam po natin ano, na hindi po aksidente na tinawag ng Diyos si Paul 
appointed time po ng Panginoon yun. Bagamat, nung una, hindi po niya, ang akala niya, yung ginagawa niya ay para sa Diyos, kasi pinitulisitik niya yung mga Kristiyano, pero wala siyang kalam-alam, kinakalaman pala yung Diyos. Tingnan mo, tra, tra, sa buong akala mo, akala mo, ginagawa mo yung kalooban ng Diyos, pero wala kang kamalimalay, kinakalaman mo pala ng Diyos. Bakit? Kasi sometimes because of pride. Pero dahil sa, because of the grace of God, and mercy of God, yung, yung kabutihan ng Panginoon, nakalanas po siya ng biyaya ng Panginoon, at natanggap po niya ang good news. At bukas sa puso ni Paul, na, na, na tinanggap ito, itong mensahe na ito, naging madali ba sa kanya? Hindi. Of course na. Marami siyang naging kalaban, yung mga dati niyang kasakasama, yung mga pamilya niya, yung mga nag-disciple sa kanya. Maraming galit sa kanya, hindi lang mong nagalit sa kanya. Gusto pa siyang patahin. Kaya nga hinabon-habon siya kung saan siya nakarating. Marami siyang naranasan. Because of what? Pagsulod niya sa Panginoong Yesus. Kita niyo mga kapatid? Mayroon pong ano, mayroon pong uh, yung pagsunod po sa Panginoon. Minsan mayroon po kasama ng sacrifice niya, pag-sacrifice natin. Kaya maraming mga tao hindi nagpapatuloy. Amen? Verse 4. The title is my own son after the common faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. So verse 4, Transition from a focus on Paul's to the rest of the titles, my true child in a common faith. Three attributes are noted. First, Titus was a true child to Paul. This likely indicates that Titus had been converted by Paul. Second, they shared a faith in Jesus as the Messiah. They both lived with the belief that Jesus was the way, the truth, and the life. Ito po yung kanila pong paniniwala. Mayroon po silang pagkakaisa sa pananampalataya at sa paniniwala. Malagap po yun eh. Kasi marami na yun, uh, magkasama sa church, magkasama, iba-iba ang paniniwala. There is, there, marami pang paniniwala, yes, I'm a Christian, but I believe there are so many ways ano, para makapunta sa Diyos. But the Bible is very clear. We cannot be very clear the Bible. We don't, need, we don't need to apologize on that. It's written clearly in the scripture. The scripture that there is only one way. The Bible says that Jesus said in John 14, 6, Jesus said that, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. In Acts chapter 4, verse 12, Nor there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Sapagkat walang ibang pangalan na ibinigay ang Diyos. Ano, wala daw ibang pangalan. Sa silong ng langit, wala daw ibang pangalan na ibinigay ang Diyos para sa ikaliligtas. So, walang maraming daan. Ito yung katotohanan ng scripture. So, third, their faith was not only shared, but common. This term is significant. Paul again expresses the, uni the unity of Christians, despite the fact that Paul was Jewish and Titus was a Gentile. Think about that. Titus Gentile ito. Isa siyang hintil. Kapag tinabi ka kasi hindi ka hin pag hintil ka noon, kapag hindi ka isang hudyo, ibig sabihin ka ay hintil kahit anong lahi mo. Kasi kapag ikaw ay isang hudyo, ikaw yung, kayo yung tinawag, pinili ng pangang, kayo yung unang nakakilala sa, sa Diyos, sa tunay na Diyos. Sila yung unang uh, nakakilala sa Panginoon na sumamba sa tunay na Diyos. Sa kanilang mga patriyakan, sila Abraham, Isaac, at Hawaii. Malam, mapakita po namin ko. Paul again speaks the, uni the, the unity of Christian despite the fact that Paul was Jewish and Titus was Gentile. 
The interminer emphasizes the problems associated with Judaizer. Ito mo yung Judaizer word? Those who taught Christians were to live according to Jewish laws. Paul clearly noted in the introduction that he and Titus shared a common faith. Common faith? They were a spiritual family regardless of the divisions historically seen between Jews and Gentiles. They were family as a result of the person and work of Jesus the Messiah. Kasi marami pong mga tradition and cultures and mga uh, hudyo ng mga panahon na yun. Na in order for you to, na ikaw ay maging kalugod-lugod sa Panginoon, you have to observe the law. Lahat yun. Kailangan mong sundin yun. Yun yung tinatawag ng mga Judaizer. Pero clear ang message ni, ni Paul na si Titus sila ay mag, magkaisa sila. Ibig sabihin, nagkakasundo sila sa kanilang paniniwala. Pananampalataya, nagkakaisa po sila doon. Kaya, Paul once again adds mercy to the salutation when we realize the mercy and grace of God towards us. The result is peace. Hallelujah. See? When we realize the mercy and grace of God toward us, the result is peace. Kita mo yung buhay nyo? Kapayapaan. The day Jesus becomes the Lord of our lives is as important as the day He became our Savior. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. Kasi yung mga Christian, yung mga kapatid, na kumilala, tumanggap sa Panginoon bilang ating Panginoon at Tagapagligtas, ang inaasahan po natin buhay na maganda ay hindi lamang yung buhay na ito, lalong-lalong na lalo yung buhay na darating. Hindi nangangahulugan na wala nang problema. Hindi nangangahulugan na wala nang kamusakit sa buhay na ito. Ganun pa man, dahil mayroong ang Kristo, Jesus sa iyong buhay, kahit mayroong problema at mga pasakit na darating, hindi ka nag-iisa. Amen? Wala pa ka na doon ako. Verse 5. Ito verse na lang tayo. The reason, sabi niya sa verse 5, I left you in Crete. Ito niya yung reason. Pinaliwanan niya na. The reason I left you in Crete was that you might put in order. And what's it? Put in order. Put in order. Everything that is disordered, this is, there, there, is a, there, there is disorganized. There is disunity. Kung saan may disorder, mayroong hindi pagkakasunduan. Pag hindi disorder. Yung pamilya mo, disorder, laging nagtatalo-talo. Sa trabaho, kung mayroong disorder, laging nagtatalo-talo. Sa kahit, kahit saan, sa blood, kung may disorder, magulo. Huwag kang nasama sa isang organization or community na disorder. Kasi sabi ng Biblia, di ba? Let all things be done decently in order. Our God is God of order. Amen? Amen? Kaya, the reason I left you really was that you might put in order what was left Unfinished. Pero ang finish business na dapat ayusin. And appoint, diba ang nabing tinga? And appoint elders saan? In every town as I directed you. Bakit? Kasi baka mamaya mayroong, mag, mag, mayroong mangarag, mayroong mang, manglig-alig sa kanila doon. Kaya tinitiyak ni Paul na maglagay siya Ibig sabihin ng elders, ito yung mga matured na sa pananang palataya. Kasi pwede kang malanda na hindi ka naman matured sa pananang palataya. Pwede ka naman bata, paano matured ka? <coughs> Now, <coughs> verse 5, verse 5 explains the background to Paul's letter. Paul and Titus had ministered together evangelizing the people of the island of Crete. Paul later left with Titus remaining. This took place sometime after Paul's house arrest. 
which ended around E.D. 62 and his second Roman imprisonment, which likely occurred sometimes in E.D. 65. Kita nyo kahit na nabulok ako, nabulok ako, ibig sabihin, ito yung naranasan ko, ito yung nangyari sa akin, tuloy-tuloy yung gawain natin sa Panginoon. Tuloy-tuloy po rin siya nagbibigay ng instruction. Yung iba, ano, pag mayroong problema, mayroong mga ano, hindi ko naman kasi kaso yan. Marami na akong ibang ginagawa. I cannot go to church anymore. Because I have, uh, most in, the, there are more important things that I need to, to finish, I need to do. I need to save money. So I cannot go to church. I'd rather go to work to earn money rather than what? Listening to the preacher, praying, see? Hindi kasi nila naiintindihan, nauunawaan yung layunin ng buhay. Kasi kung naiintindihan mo ang tunay na layunin ng buhay, magbibigay ka ng kahuluga ng, 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 ng panahon sa nagbigay ng buhay sa iyo. Amen? Dito na nagtapos Time to remain in greedy for two reasons. Ano yun? First, there was unfinished business when Paul left. Titus was the man responsible for completing it. Ibig sabihin, hindi lang ito masasamahan. Ikaw yung may iwan dito, ito yung mga dapat mong gawin. Tanya ko, kung gusto yung mani Paul, pero kailangan. Kasi, mayroon pa mayroon pang ibang pinapagawa ang Diyos sa kanya. Kaya hindi, kaya hindi, hindi siya pwede mag-stay. Okay? This praise may be general in nature with the later parts of the later offering details of what this unfinished work included. Second, Titus was to appoint elders in every town. Hindi ba hindi madali ang mag-appoint ng elders in every town? Kasi makikita po natin yun, may mga karakteristik po yan. Kasi kung nag-appoint po siya dyan ng uh, korap, hindi uh, gumaganap ng mabuti sa kanyang tungkulin sa kanya ito. Yung name tag, yung pangalan, siya yung babalikan. Amen? Ano po yun? Kaya, maingat po ito. Kahit na doon sa atin pong uh, sa administration ng ating Pangulo kapag namimili sila, di ba? Talagang sinisikap nila na talagang suriin ng mabuti, plantyahin ng mabuti para hindi po sila magkamali. Kasi kung nagkamali po sila, nakakasira po ito sa administration, nakakasira po ito sa pangalan. Very important po yan. The good news was that many towns had a positive response to the Christian message. There were likely house churches in each town, though not necessarily every small village. However, these new churches lack leaders. You know? Lack leaders yung mga, daming mga naniniwan na nga. Maraming mga nanilang pala tayo sa Panginoon kasi hindi mapigilan. Because every time you preach uh, the good news, you preach about the Lord Jesus Christ, there is power. When you speak the word of Jesus, when you speak about the message of the good news, mayroon ka pang irihan yun. Kaya maraming naniniwala. The problem, lack of leaders. Walang order. Walang namumuno. Huh? These new churches lack leaders. Titus was to appoint elders. This was not hope, but rather a process in which Titus selected, listen to this, godly men based on the principles given in verse 6 to 9. Makikita po natin yan umaya. Hindi ito isang butuhan. Ano? Kasi yung butuhan minsan, kung sino mas maraming mga budget, mas maraming mga ano, yun ang malalalo. Pero lang naman yan eh. Minsan, di ba? Kaya, pero po siya yung magsiselect po siya ayon doon sa panuntunan ng salita ng Diyos na nakarapat dapat niyang ilagay doon. May panuntunan po doon. Ano yun? The elders or officer overseers were to guard the churches against doctrinal impurity. Mahalaga po ito. 
And when you speak about doctrinal impurity, means yung yung mga teaching, yung mga aral, mga doctrina, na mga yung statement of faith, mahalaga po yun sa isang church na kailangan you do not compromise on the teaching. Tanggapin man ng tao, hindi tanggapin. Doesn't matter. It either be accepted or not. Doesn't matter. The matter is what you stand doon sa truth, sa katotohanan. Tumatayo, inatayoan mo yung katotohanan. Pinanindigan mo yung katotohanan. Yung aral na yun, nanindigan ka. Amen? Meron mo ba sa atin dito ang nanindigan sa katotohanan? Amen. Meron ba sa atin dito na kayang tayuan yung katotohanan? Amen. Hindi lahat ng katotohanan ay madaling tanggapin ang katotohanan. Do you know that? It's not easy to accept the truth. Mm. Because sometimes truth hurt. Amen. Isn't it? Isn't it, my brothers and sisters? Amen. Masakit minsan ang katotohanan. Pero kahit masakit ang katotohanan, higit na mas masakit ang kasinungalingan. Yes. Susan mo gustong masaktan sa katotohanan o sa kasinungalingan? Masaktan ka na sa katotohanan, huwag lang sa kasinungalingan. Kasi higit na mas masakit, masaktan sa kasinungalingan. Amen? Amen. Sabi mo sa iyo, Madam, that's true. That's true. Are you with me? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Right? Verse 6. <coughs> Yung verse na tayo, ha? Kita niya? Kita niya, pagka hindi may hindi mo malawak pala, no? Malawak pala ang ibig sabihin, no? Kalang ganun-ganun lang yun. Kalang natin ganun-ganun lang yun, pero magbinasa natin. Pero pagka inunawa natin, mabuti malalim pala. Di ba? No? You know? If a man is blameless, if a man is blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of dissipation or insubordination. Madali natin maintindihan itong insubordination. Pero yung dissipation ni Jew, ano tayo? Patulong tayo sa kasinari. Now, tinan mo natin yung dissipation din na niya. Overindulgence in sensual pressures, dissipated living, a descent, descent into drunkenness, and sexual dissipation. Kita mo, di na itindihan natin. Doon ang panatik. Yung example niya. When you spend money and resources carelessly, this is an example of dissipation. Doon ang panayun. Kita mo yun? When you spend money and resources carelessly, sabi namin, pinagkiraman ko lang naman ito. Kung saan ko gusto mong gastusin, nasa sa akin yun. Really? Listen to this. Whatever you have, that belongs to you. It belongs to God. Kaya lahat ng pinagkatiwala sa'yo ng Panginoon, gawin mo sa mga bagay na makakabuti sa iyo, sa kapwa mo, sa pamilya mo, lalong-lalo na sa Panginoon. Amen? Amen. Parang makalala ng Panginoon. Yes! You work hard. That's that's right. But every, everything you have, it belongs to God. It's not belongs to you. Amen? Amen? Just get, the, the reason why you have to give Him the, the, give him the glory Huh? Ayan sabi niya, when you spend money and resources carelessly, this is an example of dissipation. Di ba maraming naman na pagkatapos ng sweldo? O oh, pali, bago sweldo tayo. Wala tayo na... Di ba? Pali yung... You know that? You know, you know that? Kaya natin nag-aaway si Mr. Chuck at si Mrs. Why? Paglabas ng... Pag, pag, pagkakuha ng sweldo, saan pupunta? Diretso na! Tagay dito, tagay doon. Pagkatapos na lang lahat, karo pera mo nang natira. Kunti na lang, yun na lang, kunti na lang, nagpapadala. Trabaho mo rin eh. Kaya mo rin eh. Ayan, kahit ka ulit ang trabaho. Bagong sweldo na naman. So, what happened? Ano nangyari? Wala. Kasi maliit man, umalagi. 
na ipinagkatiwala sa iyo ng Panginoon. Lord, salamat sa ipinagkatiwala mo. Salamat. Thank you for this blessing, God. Give me wisdom, O God. And bless, bless mo ito, Panginoon, kung paano mo gusto mo. Paano gamitin ito? Magamit ito para sa ikabubuti sa aking pamilya. Hindi, pagkatanggap ko ng pera eh. Pagkatanggap ko pa lang ng text eh. Kailan ka magpapadala? Magpapadala ka agad, di man nanumusta. Tatawag ka ngayon. Hindi ko ba alam kung ano ang pinaghihirapan dito? Nagtitiis ako, nagtsatsaga ako, na minsan, hindi ako makakain ng ano, kasi kayo ang iniisip ko. Nagkatista ka na lang sana. Ang daming mga, alam nyo, minsan, ang daming mga OFW yung mga kasama natin ng mga artista. Kaya pagka nag-aryan, kapag ka nag-audition mga yan, pasado yan. Ilagay mo sa drama. Amen? Malapakan natin yung mga ginawa. Hindi sila may hirapan eh. Kumuha ng mga ano, yung sa mga mag-audition, yung mga drama. Ilagay mo kahit sino ko OFW. Kung drama lang pinag-uusapan, talagang katotohanan. Diba? Pag naging tayo ito, example lang. Diba? Hindi mo ba alam kung gaano hirap ko? Kung paano mo sigaw, sigawan ng madam ko? Diba? Isis, ito hana naman minsan, diba? Pero kung mas maganda siguro sabihin natin, alam nyo, mga anak, hindi naman lang ako nagpapakasarap dito eh. Pero alam nyo, may awa ang Diyos. Kita nyo, nakakarapos tayo kahit kundi. Kaya yung papadalang po sa inyo dyan, pagdasal po natin na ang Panginoon ang siya magkaloob sa atin ang ating pangalan. Sama-sama tayo yung magdasal. Mas magandang pakinggan, di ba? Amen? Mas magandang pakinggan, di ba? Minsan nakaka-ano po tayo, nakaka-encourage po tayo sa ating pangalan. Minsan kasi, pupunta na lang sa padalahan, eh, nag-iinit ka, eh. Nag-iinit ka eh. Pati yung, ano, yung counter, yung napapagalitan eh. Ganun ka ma'am. Hindi, hindi ako ganit sa'yo ha. Ay, ganun. Ay, ganun. Alam ka rin natin ako ito. Kaya minsan dapat, ano eh, yung, yung, at tukunamaan sa isa't isa. Mahal ka yun. Now, tignan natin. First, the individual must stand out for strong moral character. Character. Second, the elder was to be known as the husband of one wife. Mahina to sa mga nangumulo kayo. Sino mga leader nyo? Sino mga leader nyo? Kung tulis pa ninyo? Ah, yun. Grabe yun. Mahirap kasi minsan eh. Mahirap talaga ng ano yun. Maghanap talaga ng ano yun. Alam mo yun? Lalo sa panahon ngayon, di ba? Yung iba nga, ano yun? Galit na galit sa kanyang masawa. Galit na galit lagi sa kanyang masawa. Yung iba nga, naghahanap ng mapapangasawa eh. Kasi tagal lang eh. Nagpipray, wala pa rin hanggang ngayon. So, wala pa rin lang. Tsaga lang. Amen? Amen. Kaya huwag nyo laging kinagalitan yung asawa ninyo. Kaya baka nung kung ano naman, laging pasawa ninyo. Diba? Ano gagawin ko? Di gagalitan mo. Di ba? Di ba? Pero sabi naman niya, be angry and do not sin. Ikinakailangan ko talagang mag-alit. Di ba kapitigil mo eh. Ikaw naman ang magkasakit. Amen. Amen? Amen. Pero ano lang, hinahinay lang man. Dahil, hinahinay lang. Okay? Huwag masyadong, ano, kumbaga parang, mga timing. Ibinubuhos yung galit lahat doon eh. Kapag nagpagalitan ng mga muna, nagalitan si madapang, kausap siya eh. Si Mr. sabi, ah, anong gusto mo? Kaya babawin, doon, doon binabawin na eh. Kaya minsan, kahit gusto kong kausapin, gusto kong tawagin, lagi kang galit. Are you with me? Yes. Parang mo yung katabi mo, lagi ka bang galit ka? Sayangin ka. Alam mo mga kapalit, bago kayo tumawa, minsan, unang alam mong higaan, yung dili mo ang baga. Tinanong mo na yung sarili mo, humiti ka muna. Ayos pa ako? Pag umarap pa sa camera minsan, nakalipstick ka pa, nakalipstick ka pa. Pero pag kausap mo yung pamilya mo, kahit hindi ka naliligo, hindi ka pa nag-iilamos, ha? Ano yun? Ano yung kalam mo? Pumaya ka na yung tumawag? Are you with me? Parang parang nangyayari yun, di ba? Are you with me, mga kapatid? Amen, amen. Dark energy, ito yung 
elder husbands that reject God. This is not the same as children who are young and don't yet have well-defined personal faith in Christ, nor does it seem to include those old enough to live on their own, apart from their father's control. The elder children were not to be known for partying, disobedience, or unbelief. Kita mo, mga kapatid, hindi pa na basta-basta, no? Kasi yung katangian niya, kasi maumuno siya ng isang papangaral niya ang salita ng Diyos, maumuno siya ng isang church, dapat maganda rin niyang napaumunuan yung kanya pong sambahinan, yung kanya pong mga anak. Binibigyan niya ng mabuting halimbawa, good example. Many parents are good teacher. Many. But the Bible says, it's not only a good teacher, we should also be a good trainer. It's easy to teach. It's easy to teach. When you learn, you teach. It's easy to learn. But it's hard to train. Amen. Teach you just say that, my son, don't smoke, don't drink, it's not good. Why? When you got drunk, big problem. But train you itself, you don't smoke, you don't drink, because you're saying it. Meaning, you set an example, you model it. Kaya sabi ng Biblia, di ba, yung Proverbs 22, train up a child the way he should go. So when he is old, he will not depart from it. Pag sinasabi ko sa anak mo, huwag kang maninigarilyo, huwag kang mag-iinaw, huwag mong sabihin, anak, bilang ako ng isang kahong malburo doon sa, sa tindahan. Ah, huwag kang maglalasin, anak, bilang ako ng isang migil pair, yung maraming siguraduhin mo. You do not model it. But you should train it. Means, minumodel mo. Nag-uukol ka ng panahon kahit busy ka, nag-uukol ka ng panahon para makinig. Magbigay ng panahon. Maraming pa akong gagawin. Napadala, na, 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 natanggap ko na yung panala ko? Nabili mo na yung mga ano mo? That is all good. You are doing your obligation. But being a parents is not only the obligation. You model it. Amen? Para pangalala ng mga ito. Ano yung mga ako ni? Sino sabi natin, galing natin minsan eh. Huwag kong gagawin yan, mga ganyan. Talagang ang galing mga aral. Pero makikita mo na saan siya. Nagtutungkit na pala. Ayan. Nakapagluto na kayo doon? Malapit ang matapos to. Ayan. Para ka pa naman sa harap. Huwag mo kong gagayahin anak ha. Huwag ka magsusugal. Pag nagsugal ka, makikita mo. Pero pag, pag gumikita na niya ng sarili niya, sabihin mo, may hanap buhay na siyang sarili. Nagsusugal na rin siya. Bakit ikaw? Hindi ka ba, hindi ka ba nagsusugal? Wala na. Tahimit ka ngayon. Amen? Amen? Pero pag ikaw mismo, pinumodel mo, pinapakita mo, magpukusay, may hiya kahit pa paano yan. Di ba, anak? hindi makakabuti yan sa iyo. Ito yung magandang dapat natin gawin. Wala ka na sa mundong ito, maalala ka pa ng mga magulang, ng mga anak mo. Alam mo yung nanay ko noon, sasabihin niya, ganito yung aking nanay. Sasabihin niya ngayon sa akin niya, alam mo ba, ang lola mo, ganito yun. Yung legacy mo na may iwan, maganda. O kaya, kung gusto mo marinig, huwag mong tutularan ang nanay ko. Alam mo yung lola mo, Naku, yan! Kanyang na yan. Anong ilalagay doon sa lapid mo? Anong gusto mong ilagay sa lapid mo pag bala ka na? What do you want to write? Sa lapid mo? Ha? <coughs> Nakalagay doon, rest in peace. Ano bang gusto mong ilagay? Anong gusto? Pag, pag pangimilian ka. Sa so, usunod na preaching niya, kaya nilalagay natin ang preaching niya. Title ng message, Ano ang isusulat mo sa iyong lapid na? Ano? <laughs> Kasi meron na ngayon, Pinag pinaghahandaan na ngayon, di ba? Marami ng mga insurance kayo. Ano bang tawag doon siya? Tawag doon, life insurance. Di ba? Nung life insurance, dapat death insurance. 
Di ba? Heavenly ano? Mga bagyad na mga pangalan. Kaya mo, hindi mga rin? Totoo ito, mga kapatid. Hindi ito ano? Totoo ito. Ha? Kaya po mga kapatid, ipangaral po natin yung maubuting aral. We have to teach our children yung good example, good character based on Biblical. Because if you do not teach your children, you will regret it one day. Somebody will teach them. And you cannot control it anymore. If you allow this, the system of this world, yung sistema ng mundong ito, ang magtuturo sa mga anak mo, you will regret it one day. Amen? Amen. Elders and pastors must meet their criteria in order to serve in orders in those roles. Police cases such as moral character, control over their family, and ability to teach the truth. Paul gives a similar equally important list in 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1 to 7. Also crucial is the ability to confront and correct those who teach false doctrines. Sins. Number 7. Verse 7. Yung line lang tayo. An overseer manages God's household. Manages God's households. He must be blameless. That's right. Kingdom ang pinag-uusapan dito, pinag-uusapan dito, kaluluwa ng tao eh. <coughs> Tapos yung nangangaral ng kaluluwa ng tao ay walang kredibilidad. Aba, mahirap naman yata yun. Punong-punong ka ng pride. Hindi ka marunong tumanggap ng pagkakamali pagka nagkulang ka. Aba, delikado yun. Huwag ka makikinig doon sa taong gano'n. Delikado yun. Matadamay ka ba? Walang ano, walang walang paninindigan. Hindi ba hirap po yun ang mga kapalit? Since an overseer manages God's household, he must be blameless, not overbearing, not quick-tempered, not given to drunkenness, not violent, not pursuing this honest game. Yan ang mga karakter. Verse 7 calls elders an overseer and God's temper. This Local churches leaders function similarly to leaders in local Jewish synagogues. They directed people of a local area according to God's principles. This required being above reproach, which is also stated in verse 6. In addition, five other traits are required. What are those? First is humility rather than arrogance. Means you're, you're not saying that you're always right, no? Sometimes you're also wrong. And humble yourself if you make mistake. Do not justify it. Pag nagkamalay ka, humble yourself. Say, I'm sorry. People around you, they do not expect you anyway to be perfect. The people around you, they do not expect you to be perfect. Because they are not perfect also, they know that. But what you know what they expect from you? They expect from you to be honest. Mm. Amen? Amen? Amen. When you are late because you get up late, just say, no, uh, don't say that there is traffic. Maybe there is no traffic. Your boss is also on that way. There is no traffic. Don't make any excuses that is not, uh, especially if it's not true. Amen? Amen. Amen. Second, those who became easily angered were not fit to lead others. Ibig sabihin, kasabihin na hindi ka na nagagalit. Nagagalit ka kung mayroon dapat kagalitan. Pero madali kang magalit, di ba yun? Di ba na yun? Yung madaling magagalitin ka, di ba yun? Do you know someone who is really get angry? Do you know someone? Ah, huwag kang maglalapit lagi doon. Mahirap yun. Pagkat ka lang punti sa tanah nyo, Sinia! Nagdadami ka, baka mapaaway ka pa. <laughs> yung may talagang mga pang ano, yung pang butas na gulong, at mahirap. <laughs> baka madami ka, mapaaway ka. Tutulang. Are you with me? <laughs> Third, an elder could not be known as a drunk card. <laughs> Delikato yun lang, di ba? Before regulations, almost everyone drank a certain amount of alcohol. Drunkenness, however, was unacceptable for a church leader. Those who became become drunk are either 
demonstrating poor judgment, dependence on something other than Christ, or a pleasure-seeking lifestyle. All of these are incompatible with a Christian elder. For a church leader could not be violent. The matching list in 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 3 adds the idea of gentleness, indicating someone sensitive to the needs of others. Ibig sabihin, mayroon kang bukas na palad at bukas na puso. Marunong kang lumingap sa mga nangangailangan. Amen? Hindi mo sabihin, pag-pray kita, God bless you. Eh, mayroon kang kailangan mo bigyan ng tinapay, mayroon kayo, hindi mo naman, kahit pa paano. Pinalitin mo yung kung mayroon kang magagawa. Amen? Are you with me? Amen? Amen. Yes. If another was not to be greedy, or serving in order to make money. Delikado yan. Marami yan. Marami mga bumabagsak dito mga dito. Eh. Kaya bumabagsak. Marami. Titus verse 1 to 8. I told you that verse 9 only, right? Verse 8. Rather, he must be hospitable. One who loves what is good who is self-controlled, upright, holy, and disciplined. Kasama pa yan, di ba? Kasama pa yan. Disiplinado rin siya, mga kapatid. In a sense na rin, yung pagiging disiplinado rito, hindi yung sinasabing stricto, iba yun. Iba kasi yung strict ka, stricto sa disiplinado. Stricto ka lang tayo, stricto, kung mas masakay mali-mali yan. Disiplinado ka means pinag-iisipan mo kung ano yung makakabuti yun. Ano yung makakasama? Pinapaliwanag mo. Okay? Verse 8 continues the list of elder qualification which began in verse 5. Six traits are listed here. Ano-ano po mo yun? Write it down. First, an elder is to be hospitable since churches met in homes. An elder must be known for hospitality which was also a key virtue in the answer there is. Okay? Second, an elder must be a lover of good, not a lover of money. Lover of good. Ibig sabihin mo, sabi namin ka, magroon ka tumanggap sa iyong tahanan. Diba? Kapag mayroon tumating, mabay. Ino-offer mo naman sila na may inom dyan kung mayroon kung mayroon mga kain, may offer mo sila. Ganun po yan, mga kapatid. Second, an elder must be a lover of good, an elder could not love evil, and be fit to lead Christians. Okay? Third, an elder must be self-controlled. This great compliments for seven where elders are not to be with tempered and also serve as part of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. We know about the fruit of the Holy Spirit, right? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. Fourth, an elder must be upright. The Greek word, the kind of means fair or just. Hindi ka nagtatangi. Hindi tayo mayroon kang pinguritisang na. Hindi po gano'n. Pantay-pantay. Tama. Ang paghatol. Ang pagtingin. Next. Fifth, an elder must be holy or set apart. This command reflected the Torah as well. In the Old Testament, being holy made a focus on being like God, reflecting His nature. Ibig sabihin, meaning, si Christ nakikita sa iyong buhay. Si Kristo nakikita sa iyong buhay. Hindi yung yung pagiging hindi ka, hindi ka makilala. Nagpa, ano ba, nagiging hunya. Pag nandito ka, nagiging hunya ko ba? Nagpaparit ka ng kulay. Nasa church ka, mabait ka na yun. Ay, you're in the church. Praise God, brother, sister. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Pag ka nandun ka na sa ano yung balik, what did you say? Huh? What? Walang gano'n, mga Amen? Amen. Since an elder was to be disciplined, a godly elder must be able to stay focused. This is especially important in the situation of greeting. Paul letters to Titus will continue to speak about the need to teach God's truth and refute those who oppose it. Yung mga nagmamarunok, dapat alam mo rin kung paano mo sila pagsabihan. 
Kaya dapat, para mo papagsabihan mo siya, alam mo yung katotohanan, alam mo yung aral, alam mo yung tama at mali. Sa balita na ngayon, salita ng Diyos. In order for you to do that, you spend time to study the Word of God, to pray, seek the heart of God. Amen? Amen? Amen. Verse 9. Sabi mo sa katabi, ang huli. Pagkali. Yeah, kita mo, kami ko sa inyo. He must hold firmly to the trustworthy message. Trustworthy message. Kita mo yung trustworthy message. At least, katiwatiwala yung mensahe. Diba? Katiwatiwala yung sinasabi. Eh kung ang dami-dami yung sinasabi, puro naman kasi nungalingan. Mas pala na kahit may silang, katiwatiwala naman. Maganda yun, diba? Diba? He must hold firmly to the trustworthy message that has been taught so that he can encourage others by some doctrine and refute those who oppose it. This is final verse listing qualification for Luke Andrews and there's the first requirement in verse 9 is holding firm to truth as taught in the word of God. One key to distinctions of an elder is the ability to persist in great interpretation of God's truth. This was demanded of Jewish religious leaders in Israel chapter 7 verse 8 and remained a key expectation of New Testament elders. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 20 echoes this idea explaining the need to find faithful men who are able to teach others the truth. An elder must hold firm for two reasons. First, an elder must be able to teach God's truth which requires a stable understanding of spiritual things. This is both a spiritual gift and a skill which has to be developed. Dito develop po yun. Yung gift na pinagkalob sa atin. Second, an elder must stand firm in order to counter those who want to take the truth. Titus faced many false teachings. He and the chosen elders had to be ready to stand against false teaching while promote, promoting some doctrine or healthy teachings to those under their care. Standing firm requires both a solid offense and defense in communicating God's truth. Yeah. Now in context, in Titus chapter 1 verse 1 to 4, if you may stand up please, my brothers and sisters. Titus 1 verse 1 to 4. Introduce the letter from Paul to Titus who was left on treaty in order to oversee the churches there. Paul refers to himself as a bad servant or as the name of Jesus Christ. He makes it clear that Titus and Paul share a common faith and a common Savior. In verse 5 to 9, explain the requirements of those who lead a church. Elders and pastors must meet this criteria in order to serve in those roles. Paul has issues such as moral character, control over their family, an ability to teach the truth. Paul gives a similar, equally important list in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 7. Also, Roshan is the ability to confront and correct those who teach false doctrines. Amen? So, my brothers and sisters, here comes the most important part of this message. I don't want to miss this opportunity. Those of you who do not know Christ, uh, this is the... I do believe that this is the uh, appointed time for such a time as this. Uh, ito yung tamang panahon. To come, come to Jesus, surrender your life to Christ, and receive Him as your Lord and Savior. Ito yung mahalaga mga kapatid. Come to Jesus. Whoever you are, whatever you pass, come to Jesus and tatanggapin po tayo ng Panginoon. Amen, my brothers and sisters? Amen. Can you pray? Every head bow and eye closed. Just say this prayer, maybe you know that you are not living right and your heart is not right with God, but today you want to make it right. You want to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. Pray this simple prayer by heart. Say this prayer, just say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father I, come I come to you today. I believe. I believe. Lord Jesus Christ, you died on the cross of Calvary and you rose again. I repent of my sins. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Thank you 
Thank for forgiving my sins. And thank you for the eternal life. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen and Amen. Give the Lord a clap of praise. If you pray that simple prayer, my brothers and sisters, kahit kaano po ay si, kahina yan, I believe, narinig po ng Diyos ang dalangin niya. At yan ang pinakamagandang desisyon na ginawa mo sa iyong buhay. At upang tayo po yung lumago sa iyong pananampalataya, you are new, start read, read your Bible, start in the book of John, kung ikaw ay bago, and make sure, go to church, ipamulita mo ang kabutihan, ang pagliligtas na ginawa ng Diyos sa iyong buhay. Tell to your family and friends, and your life will never be the same again. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Do you have any special number? Wala na? Alright. Would you raise your hand to receive the blessings of the Lord to our benediction? And even those of you who are watching live, now to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Mighty God, Everlasting Father and Prince of Peace, because you put God first place in your life and you continue to live a life worthy of the calling and obedient to His word. Now I bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Hallelujah. Palagpahan mo natin ang kapayan. Once again, my brothers and sisters, thank you sa inyong pagsama. We'll see you again next Friday. I love you and God bless you.